I haven't filed taxes in 30 years, and I got away with it. You know, as a tax attorney, I encounter a lot of people who don't do things correctly. I met a stonemason from Norwalk, Connecticut this one time, and he confided with me that he hadn't filed taxes since the Reagan administration. And by the way, I met him in 2014. And congratulations, I said, half-jokingly. You figured out how to beat the IRS. But actually, there wasn't a lot of celebration because he didn't feel like much of a winner. He's been hiding and dodging, and he told me over the years the shame that he thinks the last time he filed was 1985, and he's been miserable ever since then. He put himself in a trap. Psychologically, it's just been too hard to remove himself from it. Now, how can this happen? How can someone not file taxes in 30 years? To me, the answer is easy. You'll do it tomorrow. And after you've had about 10,578 tomorrows, you're up to 30 years. And you can say that 1985 tax return, still unfiled and everyone since then. Procrastination is incredibly easy to achieve, sort of difficult to live with. When you can't procrastinate anymore. Now something that pulls people out of their procrastination is when the IRS files a return for them. This is called a substitute filed return, or SFR. The IRS will cobble together all 1099s, W-2, and other third-party tax reports to prepare your return for you. Taxes will typically be higher than if you file a return yourself. And if you don't explicitly disagree with what the IRS says you owe, the IRS will attempt to collect that amount from you. Now, when the IRS starts enforced collections with levies, liens, and garnishment, this could finally be the straw that breaks the procrastinators back and compels them to overcome their fear and get to work to the problem. But not everyone who gets an SFR gets the message. Some think there isn't any solution and some will do more work to frustrate the IRS by never having anything in their name. And that was the situation I was dealing with with the stonemason. He took care to make himself fairly uncollectible from anyone. That means all of his assets were in his girlfriend's name and he used bank accounts for his business or maybe he borrowed his dad's credit card. He actually didn't know if the IRS filed an SFR against him as he was keeping such a low profile, there was actually no way for the IRS to send a mail that would ever reach him. All it took for him to avoid the IRS for 30 years was a willingness to live like this third class citizen. And it was the regret for living 30 years as a third-class citizen that brought the tears out. So I was thinking, he had enough of this, right? I said, okay, well, you're ready to get started. His answer surprised me. He paused. He just looked. He goes, no, I'm a screw-up. I wasted the last 30 years of my life. I'm happy to know there's people like you out there, but I don't think I deserve to feel better. I'm a complete screw-up. Thank you for your time. Some people have accused me of being the most persuasive person in the world, and I'm really not. What I'm really good at is picking my spots. I know there are situations where there is no persuasion that can bring somebody over. I only attempt to persuade when I think the person is ready for the message. And I could tell he wasn't. So I said, please, take my card, and I hope you reconsider. He never called. You wish sometimes you could sort of live people's lives for them and make the decisions that you know they, they need to make. You wish you could straighten them out, but life doesn't work that way. Someone has to want to feel better in order to get help. Someone has to make the decision that they deserve to feel better. We are all captains of our own boats. No one can live our lives for us. It's such a tragedy that this stonemason right now, even though it's been four years since we met, is still likely mired in the same exact self-induced tragedy. By the way, my friend, if you're watching this, you can call me now, it's okay. Will you go to prison for years of unfiled tax returns? Anytime you are breaking federal law, you are really increasing your chances of prosecution. The US Department of Justice will prosecute those with unfiled returns, but statistically, the chances are they won't go after you unless you are doing something else or you're just too big of a fish to ignore. Now, a big fish isn't necessarily that big of a fish. For the IRS, a press release is what they want. 
So if you made $100,000 for the last 10 years and are unfiled, you are definitely getting into the area of big fish. The IRS can truthfully say in a press release, you did not report over a million dollars of income. And for the average juror and the public at large, there's little difference in their minds between a million and a billion. Of course, there is a huge difference. A million is a thousand thousands, and it is a billion is a thousand millions. But regardless, the perception can be that you've been living this high life all the while not paying taxes nearly everyone else is paying. But even if you do come under investigation, there is always something you can do to protect yourself. File your returns as soon as possible. I don't understand this paralysis that comes over people once they are under criminal investigation. I really don't. These should be the people working the hardest and quickest to get the problem behind them. But instead, they are often best advised to sit back and wait and let's see what happens. Well, I'm pretty sure I know what could happen if you don't fix a huge problem that you know you could be indicted for. Hint, it rhymes with indictment. Wait, no, no, it actually is indictment. The word is indictment. Yeah, you're going to get indicted. Why you should not file all your unfiled tax returns? How many years should you go back? You're going to see different answers to this question because here is the inherent tension. Filing fewer returns could create criminal or audit exposure, filing too many can slow down resolution and you can wind up paying more than you should have. Some will give blanket rules, filing three, six, ten, or even going back to the beginning of time. We look at each case one at a time. While the IRS's policy is six years back, there are times when following this rule can create more problems than it solves. Absolutely. We've done more, we've done less. This is really an area where getting a professional opinion could save you a lot of money and headache. The other thing to be concerned about with unfiled returns is the refunds rules. You know, if you don't file a return, the IRS could assess you forever. Our Stone Mason, his 1985 return, the IRS could assess them today for that. Isn't that pretty crazy? And of course, they'll add in their penalties and interest. Now, if you're owed a refund, you have a limited amount of time to claim that refund. The general rule is that you must file your refund claim in a tax return three years from when the return was due. Extensions count. Or the alternative, two years since a payment that you seek a refund on was made. If you are a day late, you will likely be completely frustrated from claiming a refund. The U.S. government will keep your money even though they know you can prove you are owed that money. The IRS can assess forever, but when you are owed money, boy, you sure have a small window of time. Does this sound fair at all to you? I'd love to know what you think. Just leave a comment below. Do you need help getting out of a procrastination rut? So maybe you're a procrastinator, or maybe you know of one you want to help. And I hope you share this with them, because I think I have some things figured out. I think I know what causes most procrastination. Procrastination is caused by being overly concerned about possible negative reactions of others to an action you're going to take. Because that action might reveal where you are. If you don't get on that scale, you can't possibly be overweight, right? Now, no doubt it can feel easier to believe a myth than to confront the truth. People are afraid to confront the truth because they are convinced acting on the truth will make them look like fools or worse. Here's some examples. Let's say that um, you came down with a venereal disease, but you are afraid of calling your doctor because you are afraid of what the nurses will think of you. Or you won't bring your car in for brake service because the interior is kind of messy. And you are worried about what the mechanic will think of you. Or you won't call for tax help because you are afraid you will be harshly judged and humiliated with hard questions about some of the bad decisions you made. Now, in each of the three situations, it is the potential judgment of people whose express purpose is to help you that is keeping you from a better life. In each of these three cases, if you choose procrastination, you are making a self-destructive declaration. The opinions of others are more important than your own safety or well-being. I'm hoping this is starting to sound a little crazy to you. 
This is the only life you get, and yet so many are saddled with a toxic belief system that elevates the potential opinions of others to the highest possible position. Well, what if you could wave a magic wand to make it so that whatever other, other people thought about you just didn't affect you, it wasn't any of your business? But it doesn't actually take a magic wand, just simple realizations. Now look, I'm gonna make a, a judgment about you. I'm gonna guess you made snap judgments about others without knowing the first thing about their problems. I know this because you're human. So of course it would make sense that you would assume others would make snap judgments about you. But the key to ending procrastination is to stop those snap judgments of others. As once you do, you'll find yourself less concerned about others making snap judgments about you. You've heard this before. The cliche, what comes around goes around. And from the Bible, Hosea 8, 7. Reap the wind, sow the whirlwind. Once you fully understand that judging others earns you nothing but misery, a shallow existence, you will no longer fear others' judgments of you. Rather, you might imagine them to be in such a bad place that they are making the mistake in believing that by judging others, in this case you, they are trying to find some sort of personal relief that's escaping them. But you, you will see right through their folly and you might actually feel sorry for them. Remember, you're not the first person in the world to screw up. In fact, screwing up is what humans do best. The ones that bounce back the quickest are successful because they don't let their mistakes define every tomorrow. They don't let a history of procrastination be the basis for additional procrastination. By the way, every professional who has been around, you really can't surprise us with your badness. You really can't surprise or shock us. While every client is unique, the patterns that lead to problems certainly aren't. In this business, if you do it long enough, you'll encounter a stonemason with 30 years on filed taxes, but you'll also encounter foreign diplomats, IRS employees, attorneys, doctors, hedge fund managers, and multi-million dollar business owners with hundreds of employees, all with one thing in common. <laughs> they really screwed up on their taxes are, and are in desperate need of real help. The fact is that everyone who makes a dollar on their own usually ends, with, ends up with some kind of tax problem. Just don't let it define your life. Contact us or another firm you trust. There exists an opportunity for happiness and it is your birthright. You just have to claim it. I hope you liked this video. Please be sure to share it with someone you think might need a little encouragement to tackle a tax problem. Subscribe to this channel. There are still a ton of big tax topics we're going to tackle on the tax reform package that will be coming up along with some real hope for reform to the tax reform package. This is Anthony Parents of Parents and Parents LLP, IRS Medic, and I thank you for watching.